I love to watch documentaries. Gotta be honest though, I wanted to watch this Netflix doc purely because of the name. American Conspiracy, The Octopus Murders. You know you're curious. When journalist Danny Casolaro was found dead in a hotel bathtub, police ruled it a suicide. But his family and colleagues believe he may have been murdered for investigating a conspiracy he called the Octopus, a hidden organization connected to stolen government spy software, a string of unsolved murders, and some of the biggest political scandals of the 20th century. Years later, researcher Christian Hansen pushes to uncover the secrets behind Casolaro's death and the story that killed him. Okay, normally when I see that a documentary is four episodes, each about an hour long, I get a bit worried at the amount of quality information that we're going to be presented with. But then I saw that this was produced by the same people who made Wild Wild Country, and that was a long but satisfying and informative documentary. Now, for this one, there is a lot of background information that we're given to help frame the narrative. And I love that we get a small tease of what went down at the start to then whet our appetites, but then the story jumps way back to fill in the necessary details as it moves along. We've got an investigative reporter named Danny Casolaro, who was working on a story that involved some software that was basically hijacked by the U.S. intelligence agencies from the developers. Then they tweaked it to allow the government to spy on any entity that purchased the software. And this wasn't marketed towards consumers. I mean, this was sold to other countries that were going to use it for spying. Now, from the spy standpoint, this is genius. But the further Casolaro delved into the investigation, the closer to peril he got finally ending in a sketchy situation with him being dead and the cause uncertain. Uh, this is an excellent story to follow if you're into conspiracy theories. The reason Castellero called this network the octopus is that there were eight arms that were all interconnected, creating what could be the most powerful cabal in the world. Now, I love that the links are not just thrown at us haphazardly. Instead, though, they're systematically detailed out so that we learn about one entity and how it connects to the theft of the software to then the branching connections that then eventually lead and reach the highest levels of the U.S. government. Now, the present investigation for the documentary is basically a two-person gig. We've got director Zachary Tritz, who's also filming it, and then reporter Christian Hansen. And these two put themselves into some seemingly harrowing situations by just interviewing people who are or have been involved in any part of the network. And there's one guy in particular that's kind of the know-it-all of what went on, who key players were, what technologies were being utilized. That's because he created some of it. But he's also pretty sketch. Well, there are a lot of truths that he tells. It's also documented how he interweaves a ton of lies as well. And then when you mix in some of the vagaries that he speaks in, it's difficult to discern what to believe. Either way, though, he is an intriguing character to watch. He's highly paranoid, very fidgety, exactly what you might expect from someone who believes that an international cabal is out to get him. Now, the documentary will probably piss you off at some point, especially when injustices are showcased. Some murders happen and then go unsolved for quite some time. Or when other crimes are committed, those that are found guilty mysteriously have their sentence commuted and they're set free. It's wild to watch how certain people are pretty much untouchable when it comes to legal situations. Now, my jaw was hanging open several times throughout this documentary. I was incredulous at how intertwined government officials were shown to be and how many large-scale political maneuvers went down. Now, for instance, the documentary highlights some ideas surrounding the 1980 presidential election between Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. Now, whether or not you buy into the information that's presented, Casalaro makes a good case for his beliefs through documented research. Now, what could be the most frustrating element to this whole documentary is that we don't get any real definitive proof or answers. I mean, even with Freedom of Information Act requests, the info Hansen uncovers, it's incredibly convincing. But since those involved are either dead or so highly protected from everything, I'm not sure the truth is ever going to be confirmed. <laughs> That's also, though, what makes it so engaging to watch. I mean, I went down the rabbit hole with Hansen and Treats. The documents, interviews, and pictures they discover all help to support what Casalaro was pointing to. And even if you don't believe a word that's uttered in the documentary and wholeheartedly believe that the U.S. government is completely ethical and trustworthy, this story makes an excellent mystery and one that I would love to see made into a thriller. I do think this runs a bit long. Not that the information isn't intriguing, but there are some interviews where subjects don't really answer a question or they just stare at the camera not speaking. These are great to establish a reluctance to participate, but repeated views of this same thing, they're not necessary. 
I think it also feels a little long because of that lack of resolution that I mentioned earlier. There's not much of a payoff other than the reveal of all the findings as the story goes along. We don't get a gotcha moment or a point when the whole thing goes, aha, we've solved it. So when it does end, we're just left to ponder everything and then come to our own conclusions based on what we've seen and been told. So if you are into conspiracy theories or you devour all sorts of documentaries, this is a great one to watch. It's lengthy, but comprehensive, diving into the weeds and going where the mystery leads. If though you're only a casual watcher of documentaries, you may want to take this in spurts. If you're not into it, it's going to feel incredibly long and drawn out to then reach the end without a solid reckoning for those supposedly involved. It is edited well, telling a cohesive and complex story in a way that's easy to follow. And while some interviews are more formal, we also get guerrilla-style on-the-go interviews that add cloak and dagger excitement to the storytelling. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and then descriptions of horrendous violence. Now, as a reminder, I don't give couch ratings to documentaries, but I highly recommend checking out American Conspiracy, The Octopus Murders. It's not just a spectacular title, it's informatively entertaining. So what conspiracy theories are you into? Which would you like to see made into a documentary? Let me know about them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.